unto us. We bless your holy name, even for this hour that we are going to sit at your presence to receive from you, from your servant. We want to commit your servant into your evil hearts, Lord. We ask that you may use him, that you may give him the utterance of your word. And Father, as your word ministers to our heart, may it also minister to him in the name of Jesus. Bless us, Lord, as we receive it and see us through to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name, so do we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Remember when he was calling the disciples, he called them, come, 
And I will make you fishers of men. When he was calling Peter and John and Andrew and Matthew, he called them. But in this instance, we don't see Jesus pointing out at a man and telling him, I want you to follow me. The man comes to him voluntarily and says, I will follow you wherever you go. And I want us to look at this from two perspectives. The literal perspective and the deeper perspective. The literal perspective, Jesus says, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man, literally, literally, has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus here is talking to this man in a literal sense and saying, Yes, you have volunteered or you're volunteering to follow me. But before you follow me, you need to count the cost. Don't just look at the benefit. Yes, there is a benefit. You're going to have something to eat. Because Jesus will perform miracles. There will be bread. There will be wine. There will be good things. Yes. And Jesus will perform miracles. It feels good to be with a man who can do things that other people can do. And it? it feels good if you are working with the president. If you are in the president's motorcade. It feels good. You get the same protection. You get the same favor. You get the same benefit. You eat the same food. Don't you? It feels good to be in the company of Jesus. It is a benefit that derived from the company of Jesus. But Jesus is telling this man that is not all. There is a cost to following me. If you want to follow me, remember, Jesus had just been rejected in a city in Samaria. Jesus did not have any permanent place where he was living. He was moving from place to place as he was doing ministry. Place to place. And so he was telling this man, remember you need to count the cost of following me. You won't have no permanent place in this world. And that is a benefit that you're going to miss. You won't have the benefit of being with your friends. You won't have the benefit of being with your family. You won't have the benefit of being with your neighbors because you have no permanent abode here in this world because I am moving from place to place as I do the work of my father. Jesus spoke to him in a literal sense. I have no place to lay my head. I have no permanent abode in this world. Jesus, the whole Jesus was in heaven because Jesus was both divine and human. And in his humanity in this world, he says he had no place. He was moving from place to place as he did miracles, as he performed miracles and signs and wonders. He moved from place to place, healing the sea, casting out demons and doing other things that he was this time to do and that he came to do. The Bible reminds us why did Jesus come? These are some of the reasons why Jesus came. First John chapter number 3. He came to take away our sins. First John chapter number 3 tells us again. He came to 
destroy the works of the devil. The book of Luke, as he spoke in the house of Zacchaeus, he says, I came to seek and save the lost. And John reminds us, for this reason, the Son of Man was manifested that we may have life and have it in abundance. Amen. Those are reasons why Jesus came. He had no permanent abode in this world. He was moving from Judea to Samaria to Jerusalem, from place to place, as he did ministry and he touched people with his word and the word of God. And as he touched people with the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But there is more than the literal message that Jesus is giving this man. There is more. Because the words of Jesus were filled with a profound revelation. The words of Jesus were always filled with power and anointing. He ministered in a way that no man had ever ministered before. See, if I was in the shoes of Jesus, or if more than people were in the shoes of Jesus, they would have been very excited by the words of this man. You know, it feels good to have a follower, doesn't it? It feels good to have people who are loyal to you. It feels good to have people who say, wherever you go, there will I go. Wherever you die, there I will die. And especially as a pastor, I would feel good to have someone who says, yes, if you say we go this way, there we will go. It feels good. And I know it feels good even for you because each one of us loves to be supported, to be loved, to be cared for, to be honored, to have people who are loyal and committed and faithful to our cause. But Jesus, he could see beyond the words. You know, we live in a world where most people know how to talk the talk, but not walk the walk. And today I want to speak to us about walking the walk and not just talking the talk. There are many people who are talking. There are many people who have a lot of words, but no action. And as we mostly say actions speak louder than words. Jesus being divine, being God, he could see what other people could not see. Because he is all knowing. Remember, Jesus is God. He is omnipotent, he is omniscient, he is omnipresent. That means he is all knowing. He is all present as God and He is all powerful. And we had another man that saying He is also immutable. That means He does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is God. He is not like us. He is not like you and me. And He is unlimited. He cannot be limited by time or resources of energy or power. He is all in all. He is all powerful. He is unlimited unlike us. Now Jesus looks at his men and he looks at his heart. And this is the second aspect I want us to look at. Not only the literal sense, but also a deeper a deeper sense in which Jesus wanted to speak in the life of this man. Says, foxes have holes. And now Jesus moves from talking about the foxes that we see and the birds of the air that we see, and he moves away from talking 
about this world where he has no abode. And he focuses on the life of this man just as he is focusing on your life. Just as he is focusing on my life this day, he looks at this man and he looks at his heart and he says, Yes, foxes have holes in your heart. I see them. And birds of the air in your heart, they have nests. But in your heart, even though you are on talk, you're talking, volunteering, you say, oh yeah, come, I will follow you, Jesus. I look right down in your heart. There is no place for me to lay my head. And this is characteristic of many Christians that are living today. We are all talk on Sunday. We are all talk in church. We are all talk in fellowship. We are all talk in Facebook and other places. We are all talking and talking and talking and posting and doing, and, and doing stuff all about words and words and words. But no action. Jesus says we need to move from talking to doing because it is more important. It would have been better if this man came and followed Jesus without saying nothing other than saying much and do nothing. Jesus speaks and says, Foxes have holes and bugs of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no way to lay his head. And Jesus looks at the heart of this man and sees things that he can compare to foxes. He looks at this heart and sees things that he could compare to the birds of the air. He looks at the many things that were crogging the heart of this man that they were not allowing a space for him to operate. They were not allowing a space for him to work. They were not allowing a space for him to do ministry. They were not allowing a space for him to do nothing. Oh, he could see what things that were hindering him from ministering, from working, from operating, from performing miracles and signs and wonders. Jesus wants to move from outside the world into our hearts. That's why Jesus spoke and said, that's why the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, he will open his heart and I will come in and eat with him. The words of Jesus in the book of John, he said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And I will pray to the Father so that he may come into your heart, so that I may come with him into your heart, so that the Holy Spirit may come into your heart. And Paul in the book of Corinthians reminds us and says, Do you not know? Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Look at that temple. Remember another time Jesus went into the temple and he met people who were doing business in the house of the Lord. And he's speaking and to them and driving them out and overturning the tables and, and scattering the, the, the coins and the money. He says, do you not know that my house should be a house of prayer? And that is what our heart should be. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants to dwell in our hearts. The Father wants to dwell in our hearts. The Holy Spirit wants to dwell in our hearts. But wait, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, they have no place to lay yeah. Talk the talk and walk the walk. We 
We need to clean up our hearts. In the Gospels, Jesus cleaned up the temple with a whip. But today he's not coming with a whip. He needs not to come with a whip. We need to allow him to come in. See, the blood of Jesus washes as white as snow. The blood of Jesus, it cleanses us. It purifies us. The blood of Jesus is not like the blood of animals. It's not like the blood of goats. It's not like the blood of cows and cattle and bulls. The blood of Jesus can do great things. That's why in remembrance we have communion from time to time. Jesus said, as often as you can in remembrance of me. Jesus wants to come in our hearts. He wants to clean up our hearts. He wants to clean up your heart. He wants to clean up my heart. And so many things that may be hindering Jesus from coming in or from operating. And so many things that may be squeezing him. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in the same place with what? He cannot dwell in the same place with things that are unclean, that are dirty. We are being exalted today to create room for Jesus in our hearts. In this deeper sense that Jesus is speaking to this man and to us. Create room for Jesus in your heart. What are those things in your heart that do not allow Jesus to come in? What are those things in your heart that do not allow Jesus to operate? What are those things in your heart that make you walk, uh, talk the talk without walking the walk? What are those things? Are they lies? Is it sin? Is it fornication? Is it immorality? What is it? What is it that does not allow Jesus to operate in your life? Is it gossip? What is it? Is it enmity with your brethren, with your neighbors, with your, with, with your, with your neighbor? What is it? What is it in your heart that makes Jesus uncomfortable to live there? We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus wants to comfortably live in our hearts. So comfortable that one of the things that he wants to do with us is to die with us. It's one thing that he says. Be, uh, Revelation 3.1 He says, I will come in and die with you. How good it is to die with Jesus. All of us are looking for an opportunity to die with famous people, with important people, with presidents, with ministers, with secretaries. We are looking for an opportunity to have company of great men. Now Jesus is giving us that opportunity today. Jesus is giving you that opportunity today. If you let him, if you create space and room, if you allow him, if you permit him, he will come in. He will eat with you. He will fellowship with you. He will minister to you and with you. You will never be the same again. Let's clean up our hearts. Clean up our lives. Those things that Jesus can compare to foxes and their holes. Those things that Jesus can compare to birds of the air and their nests. Those things. Let's do away with them. We may like them, we may love them, 
Probably it's our wealth. Probably it's our money. Probably it's our houses and our homes. Probably it's our families, our friends, and squeezing Jesus so much. He got no place to work, to eat, to fellowship, to operate, to perform miracles and signs and wonders. Let Jesus remember, talk the talk, and walk the walk. God wants people, not only who are saying the words and volunteering and Say how they want to do great things, but he wants people who are actually doing those things. And he will bless us. It is only through us that he can change the world. It is only through us that he can change people. It is only through us that he can bring revolution, revival, change. It is only through us but only if we let him. Because he cannot operate anywhere else before first operating in our hearts. He cannot operate in the world without first operating in someone's heart. He cannot bring change until he first brings change in someone's heart, in your heart, in my heart. Let us give him space, give him hope, and let him do his work. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you. Thank you for my listener, O oh God. Those who are here, and those who are listening from far. I speak the word of blessing upon them in the name of Jesus. May this word be effective in their hearts and in their lives. May it take root, O oh God. And we pray the Lord when they adhere to your word that they will never be the same again and that Lord you will bring change revival and transformation through these people when they adhere to your word. Lord, every need that is represented in our midst today, those who are here, those who are far, I pray that you meet that need in the name of Jesus. We know you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Provide, O God, in the name of Jesus. Meet the needs of your people. Help them to stand and overcome everything to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you, Lord. Please, we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. And we'll see you on Sunday.